care what it thinks I'm in, I'm going to pretend I'm in Illyria. So I can manually sort of override whatever Google came up with as my location. All right. And then if we do that, then if we open the sky up, it will show the original image. All right. Um, I did this a lot when I was testing um, websites. When you're checking for unusual or error sort of conditions, you know, how do you test for unexpected errors? Well, you can't really, right? That's that's why they're unexpected, all right? You, you can't, like, do that. But yet, you might want to have code in there that can handle it. Well, how do you handle it? Well, you fake it. You go in and you intentionally break your script, like I did here, by me hard coding in, no matter where I think I am, I'm going to pretend I'm in Illyria. And then I can test to make sure the code works, all right? But again, that is a little bit dangerous, because what if you forget to remove those lines, and everyone in the world is going to be from Illyria? All right, we'll get mighty crowded on 90, as they say. So remember to take out that code. Now, I, I saw from the one that just had latitude, longitude, city, uh -huh. that we were supplied with the benefit of the uh, Sheffield Lake label. Yes. For communities that might not have the benefit of a nice, neat label like Illyria or North Ridgeville, could you then, in your code, have the fallback for a generic picture? So well, that, that, yeah, that's exactly what I have here, right? Um, I set my image to that picture, that clip art of a girl bowling. Okay. That's, and that's right. if they happen to be in Sheffield Lake, then I swap out the cardinal. So I could have a whole slew of if statements. If the city's Illyria, then show a Pioneer Bowling. If it's Lorraine, show a Titan Bowling. So, I mean, gosh, with just this county alone, you could have yeah. 18, 20 ifs, right. and if right. none of them match. And if none of them then, then you just, you just stay with the default generic nice. looking image. Nice. Yeah. Notice I removed this. Once, once you do that on load bit and all that, you can't really do a document write text. That will destroy everything that's on the page. So I commented that out. Your, your better thing to do, if I wanted, for example, to put the name of the image, I could do something like this. Div ID equals um, city name. Then I could say that were in Sheffield Lake and it displays the word Sheffield Lake. And you did that by an inner city thing? Inner HTML. Or, yeah, what, what exactly is that? The inner HTML, what that does is, here's a tag that has an ID of city name. The inner HTML is the stuff between the start and end tag. Right? And initially there's no stuff between there. But what this command does is it takes whatever Google came up with as a city and popped it in that inner HTML. So we could do something like this. That's, that's a, uh, I love that feature. Yep. It could, just for, I guess, playing devil's advocate, could we add a variable where we have a, Tiny little blurb, welcome Sheffield Lake. That's citizens. exactly what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Sound like we're having a concert.
concert here. Hello, Sheffield Lake. Now notice this does work under IE because it's not using the browser's geolocation. It's going out and you're running a script uh, on Google and Google is asking its server for the location. It's using the IP detection probably and coming up with that. Now, remember, and this is where practicing your JavaScript is going to come in, all right, and, and where this is good because, you know, this is just small potatoes what I did right here. Right? In other words, if we look at this, you know, I grabbed the city and did a couple of things based on the city I was at. You could do more extensive things. You could have divs that you showed and hide, sh showed and hid. I don't know what the right tense of the verb is there. That you make visible and make invisible based on what city they're in. All right. So that's one thing that you could do is you could you could create code that does that. All right. You could create content based on that and so on. Now what we'll go over next time is putting this out on the server. All right. In other words, doing this similar sort of thing except using server side code. And again, um, the advantage of that is that um, instead of sending a page with Illyria links, Sheffield Lake links, Lorraine links, and hiding some of them, we'll actually go in and we will generate the page only having the links that are needed for that particular city. All right. So uh, what we will do next time is we will look at these examples using PHP. code that we can go. And we'll do a very similar thing, except we will do it um, in PHP. Could, could that example still be posted on uh, Angel? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah I'll post great. the stuff that we went over today uh, out on Angel. I'll go and do that now. All right. So we could have entire divs loaded up with customized paragraphs and pictures just literally waiting for the the glorified city tag to give it the green light. Yeah. There's, again, there's a lot of ways that you can do this. Really, um, how do I want to say this? Um, just out of curiosity, let's see how this does in the mobile emulator. Sheffield like. Um, but at any rate, uh, yes. Now again, keep in mind that if you're doing it client side, you have to send all the content to the client and then have code to hide stuff. And that may or may not be a big deal to either hide stuff or to change stuff or, or whatever. Uh, that may or may not, depending on your content, be a big deal. What you could do via PHP, though, is since PHP's job is to construct that web page, you'll construct that web page only showing the stuff that you need. So you won't send Lorraine Illyria links if you're in Sheffield Lake. All right. I will post this to Angel. Are there other questions? So if uh, Wednesday focuses on how to do it via PHP, would you, how would you label this method as more of a just server side? Well, um, well. I guess I'm trying to. We're talking to a server, but the code that does the, the customization is done on the client side. So if we looked at Google Scripts, that Google Script is talking to their web server, but our code to customize a page based on the city is client side. Okay. But overall, this is method B. 
Uh, server side. This, this is sort of a, this in a way, yeah, this is more like method B than method A, okay. right, because we're not using the browser's geolocation. We're using a script that lives out on a server. So this won't be as precise. It could occasionally give me goofy information. Is this, for example, actually Sheffield Lake or is this Illyria? I think this is Elyria. I think up the road is Sheffield Lake. It's only a few hundred Yeah, it is only a few hundred feet. Uh, but again, you know, notice again, it's not quite as precise. Um, Man, that's, that effect alone will knock your socks off. So we'll look at this from a, from a, a server-side perspective um, next time, from a pure server-side perspective. This, I suppose... It's not really Ajax because there's there's no interactivity built into it, but this is sort of a mix of the the, the detection is done on the server side, but the client uses that to format the page. Um, and then the example we'll look at next time will be a pure server side example. So we're not going to look at a pure client side. Actually, the weather is the first weather example we looked at was a pure client side. Oh yeah, okay. Um, well. The weather one even did his server as well, right? Because it got weather information. Actually, a pure client side would be like this would be a pure client side one. No, it wouldn't. Because again, we're still using Google's service to look it up. The client, the client side example. How do I want to put it? The client side, the geolocation object on the client will give you a latitude and longitude. So. In that regard, you're probably not going to have too many pure client side examples because then you would have to do something at that latitude and longitude. All right. Typically, though, in the examples that we've seen, we've used the client to pull the latitude and longitude and give that to some server process, which then gives us some more detailed information, like the name of the city or the, the weather or whatever. So. Uh, a pure client side one would simply pop up the, the latitude and longitude, which I think we looked at an example of that last time. All right, but really to do any any heavy lifting, either you're going to make a server call to something, or you're going to have to code it yourself to be smart enough to know what to do with those latitudes and longitudes. So you never really you never really have a pure method A because you can't do anything with just longitude and latitude. You could if if you got. Yeah, but you you could if your if your code was able to you know um, write that. For example, let, let's think of an example. Um, you could probably tell what you. It probably wouldn't be too hard to write code to tell you what time zone the client was in, based on on that, because there's only 24 time zones. You could probably figure out what hemisphere they're in. You know, so you can know if it is winter or summer, depending on where you are. Um, but yeah, uh, it would be something that was that would be more involved. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, in that regard, you don't get the pure client side because you're probably going to grab those coordinates and give it to something on the server. Let, let, me, let me phrase that. The solution, you're right in saying that the solution is going to likely contain a mix of client and server-side code. What A and B represent isn't the entire solution, but just the piece of figuring out where you are. All right? Okay, yeah, that, that, yeah, that was a great question. They had, had me thinking for a while. I was like, you know, he's right. But yeah. The, the, the pure client side comes in with just the geolocation part, all right? So the full solution contains first deciding where you are, then doing something about it, right? So the doing something about it very well could be on a server, 
but the finding out where you are is completely on the client or completely on the server. Okay. All right. Other questions? Um, I had um, I wanted you to look at one of my labs. Okay. Go All right. Let's head down there then. So now that we kind of are getting a preview of uh, what our latitude and longitude are and how we can mm -hmm. customize the visuals, this is the same stuff, well, re relatively the same material that we can use for on a mobile device to pinpoint our exact X on the map, so to speak? Uh, yes. Okay. Again, to Andrew's point, um, we'll use the mobile device to figure out exactly where we are. We'll then probably make some sort of server call to do something with that. Right? Like, for example, draw a Google map or get a weather forecast. All right? Because chances are we can't do anything. Even if we know the exact latitude and longitude we're at, we're probably not writing code to do anything with that. Our job will just be to pull it and to give it to someone else to, to, to do more heavy lifting.